The Homo-1 fossil, unearthed in Ethiopia, stands as one of the most pivotal discoveries in the study of early human evolution. Recognized as some of the earliest evidence of anatomically modern Homo sapiens, Homo-1 has transformed our understanding of where and when humanity began. But this fossil tells more than a single story. It reveals a saga of scientific breakthroughs, evolving theories, and heated debates. In this video, we explore the extraordinary journey of Homo-1, from its discovery to the reconstruction of the skull, the reanalysis that identified it as female, her estimated height and body mass, and the ongoing controversies surrounding its age and significance in shaping the narrative of human origins. In Ethiopia's Omo River Valley, time feels infinite. The land here, carved by ancient rivers and shifting tectonic plates, has borne witness to nearly two million years of human history. This valley, part of the Great Rift System, is more than a geographical marvel. It's a living archive of our species' earliest days. In 1967, this arid expanse became the focus of one of the most important archaeological expeditions of the 20th century. A team led by Richard Leakey arrived here with a mission, to search for evidence of early humans. The Omo River Basin had already yielded remarkable finds, but the team believed there was more to uncover perhaps something that could redefine our understanding of humanity's origins. Under the sweltering Ethiopian sun, the team worked tirelessly, sifting through layers of sediment deposited over hundreds of thousands of years. It wasn't long before they struck gold. Encased within the earth, they discovered two remarkable fossils. The first, known as Omo-1, would later be identified as an anatomically modern human. The second, Omo-2 exhibited more archaic features. Together, these fossils opened a window into a critical period in human evolution. Omo-1 was unlike anything discovered before. Its high, rounded forehead and small, delicate face marked it as distinctly modern, resembling humans today far more than its contemporaries. When you look at Omo-1, you're looking at a face that could walk down the street today and you wouldn't think twice. That's extraordinary for a fossil that's nearly 200, zero, zero, zero years old. Oh, the discovery of volcanic ash layers around the fossils was a stroke of luck. Using radiometric dating techniques, scientists determined that Omo-1 was nearly 1, 9, 5, 0, 0, 0 years old, making it the oldest known fossil of an anatomically modern human at the time. This revelation placed the Omo Valley at the center of the human story. It confirmed what many scientists had long suspected, that our species, Homo sapiens, first emerged in Africa. But these discoveries didn't just tell us when and where humans evolved. They hinted at how our ancestors lived. Nearby artifacts, simple stone tools, shards of worked obsidian, suggest a community of skilled, adaptable hunters and gatherers. These tools speak of ingenuity, a capacity to shape the environment, and, perhaps, a sense of identity. The Olmo Valley wasn't always a stable refuge. Shifting climates and volcanic activity likely challenged the small human populations that lived here. But it was these very challenges that forged resilience, a trait woven into the DNA of their descendants. Standing here today, you can almost feel their presence, the echoes of lives lived long ago, lives marked by struggle, ingenuity, and survival. The Omo-1 fossil wasn't just a discovery. It was a revelation, one that connected the distant past with the present and deepened our understanding of who we are. The discovery of Omo-1 in 1967 was heralded as a breakthrough, a fossil that seemed to bridge the gap between ancient ancestors and modern humans. But almost immediately, questions began to emerge. Could this truly be the oldest Homo sapiens fossil? And if so, what did it say about where and when humanity began? At the heart of the debate was the fossil itself. Homo 1 exhibited traits that were undeniably modern, features like its rounded skull and high forehead. Yet its age, nearly 1, 9, 5, 0, 0, 0 years, made it an outlier. For decades, 
The prevailing view was that Homo sapiens emerged around 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 years ago. Omo 1 challenged this narrative. Adding complexity to the story was Omo 2, discovered nearby, but with features more typical of earlier humans. The contrast between these two fossils raised an intriguing possibility. Could Omo 1 and Omo 2 represent different populations, one modern, one archaic, living side by side? As more fossils were unearthed across Africa, the story of human evolution became murkier. The Jebel Irhud fossils from Morocco, for example, were dated to 300, 0, 0, 0 years ago, but showed a mix of modern and archaic traits. Meanwhile, the Floris Bad skull from South Africa dated to around 2, 6, 0, 0, 0 years ago, hinted at the gradual emergence of Homo sapiens. Omo 1 seemed to sit at the crossroads of these discoveries, raising a fundamental question. When did humans become modern? Over the years, advances in technology provided new ways to interrogate these ancient bones. High-resolution CT scans revealed subtleties in Omo 1's anatomy that earlier methods missed, confirming its place as a truly modern human. The shape of the skull, the size of the brain case, everything about Omo 1 screams modern human. It's remarkable that these features appeared so early in our evolutionary timeline. But for many, the most contentious question wasn't about anatomy. It was about age. How could scientists be so sure Omo 1 was 1950000 years old? The key lay in the volcanic ash layers encasing the fossil. Using radiometric dating, scientists measured the decay of isotopes in the ash to determine its age. However, early methods lacked precision, leaving room for doubt. And later, Earth age records became. A new study reanalyzed the ash layers with cutting-edge techniques, narrowing the margin of error and confirming that OMO-1 was indeed 7.95000 years old. This confirmation reshaped our understanding of human origins. It solidified Ethiopia as a critical hub for early Homo sapiens and provided new evidence for the out of Africa theory, which traces modern humans spread across the globe. Omo 1 wasn't just a fossil. It was a challenge to the way we thought about ourselves, forcing us to confront the complexity of evolution and the possibility that modern traits appeared far earlier than we believed. We're not looking at a linear story. Evolution is messy. Omo 1 reminds us that humanity's journey was shaped by diversity, interaction, and adaptation. For decades, Omo 1 sparked debate and defied easy answers. But that's the beauty of science. Every question leads to new discoveries, and every discovery brings us closer to understanding where we come from. Subscribe now to join our exclusive community where we explore prehistoric humans and extinct animas twice a week. Hit subscribe so you don't miss out. Africa is often called the cradle of humanity, and for good reason. Its fossil-rich landscapes have provided unparalleled insights into the origins of our species. Among these, the Omo River Valley holds a special place but it's far from the only clue to the complex tapestry of early human evolution. In 2017, scientists made a stunning announcement. Fossils from Jabol Irhud in Morocco, long believed to belong to an earlier human ancestor, were reanalyzed and found to be 300, 000, 000, 000 years old. These fossils displayed a fascinating mix of features. While their faces resembled modern humans, their elongated skulls hinted at an earlier stage of evolution. We're looking at a population on the cusp of modernity. They're not quite like us, but they're getting there. It suggests that the traits defining Homo sapiens didn't emerge all at once. They evolved over time and in different regions. Further south, discoveries like the Floris Bad Skull, dated to 260000 years ago, and the Border Cave fossils, around 200 years old, painted a picture of regional diversity. These sites revealed populations experimenting with survival strategies and toolmaking, 
adapting to their local environments. Unlike earlier species, these early Homo sapiens displayed remarkable adaptability. They thrived in a continent marked by extreme climatic shifts, moving between environments that ranged from dense forests to open grasslands. These were people who didn't just survive, they innovated. Archaeological evidence suggests they began creating tools with greater precision, managing fire with expertise, and perhaps even engaging in symbolic thought, a precursor to art and language. In the context of these discoveries, Oma 1 stands out. Its modern traits were fully formed, even as fossils like Jebel Earhood and Florisbad showed transitional stages. But what does this mean? Was Oma 1 part of a distinct population? or one of many groups contributing to the patchwork of early human evolution. Recent genetic studies suggest that the story of early Homo sapiens was not linear but regional. Instead of a single cradle in one location, there may have been multiple populations interacting and exchanging genes over thousands of years. Homo 1 represents one branch of a much larger tree. Our ancestors weren't isolated. They were dynamic, constantly moving, mixing, and adapting. Another striking aspect of this era is the cultural evolution taking place. Across Africa, artifacts reveal a leap in cultural literacy. In South Africa, ochre used for body decoration hints at symbolic thought. At sites near Omo, Obsidian tools suggest trade networks spanning vast distances. These innovations weren't just about survival. They hinted at something more, a shared identity, a sense of community, perhaps even an early form of storytelling. In these gatherings, we see the seeds of what would become language, art, and culture, qualities that defined us today. Omo'on and the fossils from sites like Jebel Urhud and Florisbad remind us of something profound. The origins of humanity were shaped by diversity. Different groups adapted to their unique challenges, each contributing to the collective journey of our species. Today, the descendants of those early humans walk these same lands. Their resilience, ingenuity, and creativity echo through time, connecting us to a shared story that began on this vast, beautiful continent. The fossils of Omo 1 are a testament to this legacy, a snapshot of a moment in time that continues to shape who we are. They remind us that humanity's strength lies not in uniformity, but in the incredible diversity of our origins. Deep within ourselves lies a tiny powerhouse called the mitochondrion. Beyond providing energy, it holds a vital key to our past. A genetic time capsule, passed down from mother to child, unchanged except for tiny mutations over generations. This mitochondrial DNA has helped scientists uncover a profound truth. All modern humans share a common maternal ancestor, a woman who lived in Africa roughly 1, 500, 0, 0 to 200, 0, 0, 0 years ago. She's known as mitochondrial Eve. The name Eve might sound mythical, but this isn't about one lone woman in a garden, nor was she the first human. Instead, she's the most recent common ancestor of all living humans, traced through an unbroken line of mothers. Think of it like this. As populations grow, many genetic lines disappear over time. But by following mitochondrial DNA backward, scientists can identify a single point of convergence a genetic mother whose legacy persists in all of us. This groundbreaking discovery was made possible by advances in genetics, particularly the sequencing of mitochondrial DNA. In the late 20th century, scientists compared samples from diverse populations around the world, mapping mutations like a trail of breadcrumbs back to their source. The evidence pointed to Africa, confirming what fossils like Omo 1 had already suggested. Our species originated on this continent. But mitochondrial Eve wasn't alone. She lived among other humans, many of whose genetic lines faded over millennia. What's fascinating is that mitochondrial Eve isn't unique biologically. She's unique statistically. Her lineage just happened to survive, while others didn't. 
That's the nature of genetic drift. So, who was mitochondrial Eve? We don't know her face or her name, but we can imagine her life. She lived in a world of constant change, a time of volcanic eruptions, shifting climates and fluctuating resources. Her community relied on cooperation to survive, sharing food, tools, and knowledge. It's likely that she was part of a small, tight-knit group. These early humans weren't just surviving, they were innovating, using tools and fire, and perhaps even sharing the first stories around flickering campfires. From mitochondrial Eve's time onward, her descendants spread across Africa. Over tens of thousands of years, some groups began to migrate outward, their genetic legacy branching like a vast tree. These migrations, beginning around 700 zero years ago, marked the start of humanity's global journey. Her children and their descendants carried with them not just tools and fire, but stories, languages, and the seeds of culture. The echoes of these ancient journeys are seen in every corner of the world, in the symbols etched into cave walls, the tools buried in ancient soils, and the genetic code within each of us. But the story of mitochondrial Eve doesn't end there. Modern genetic research has revealed more than just our shared ancestry. It's uncovered the complexity of our past, including interbreeding with other hominin species like Neanderthals and Denisovans. This blending of species enriched our DNA, giving us traits that helped us adapt to new environments. While we carry Eve's mitochondrial signature, we also carry fragments of genetic code from ancient relatives who walked a different path. Understanding mitochondrial Eve is just the beginning. Her story is part of a larger mosaic, a complex interwoven history that shows how interconnected all humans truly are. Today, the legacy of mitochondrial Eve lives on in all of us. Her journey is a reminder that we are all connected, not just by our shared ancestry, but by the resilience and creativity that define humanity. Her story isn't just ancient history, it's a celebration of what it means to be human. From the Omo Valley to the farthest reaches of the globe, her descendants continue to thrive, innovate, and dream. Mitochondrial Eve's legacy reminds us of our shared roots. In a world often divided by borders and differences, her story offers a simple but profound truth. We are one family, united by the ancient threads of our past. As we marvel at humanity's diversity today, we honor our shared origins. The Amoan discovery reminds us that despite our differences, we all walk the same ancient path, a journey that began in Africa nearly 200 zero, zero, zero years ago. Hit that subscribe button now. If Omo One tells us where we came from, our previous episode explores how we adapted to thrive in this world. What made us the naked apes? And why was losing our fur essential to our survival and evolution? Click here to uncover the fascinating story of how shedding fur shaped the human species. You don't want to miss it. Press on the video now popping on your screen. I am sure you will love it. Don't forget to leave a like on this video and see you there.